Thank you for joining today's Ekadashi. Vijay Ekadashi, I think. So, Madhav Titi Bhakti Janani. So, this is Madhav Titi. So, by observing Ekadashi means increasing our devotional service. Then we get a lot more benefit than on other days. And it's a special day, day of Lord Hari. So, ultimately every day is the same. I mean, but there are special, uh, you know, we have special discounts and things like that. So, this day is very dear to Lord Hari. Even Lord Chaitanya told his mother, Sachi, please don't eat grains on Ekadashi. Of course, to show like an ex- as an example. So, not to eat grains, beans on this day and to uh, increase our remembrance of Krishna by chanting, hearing and water, whatever other services that one can do. Okay. Upavas is the day when we recite close to the Lord. So, right. So, we'll read Srimad Bhagavatam. There are five limbs of devotional service which are very potent. One of them is Srimad Bhagavatam. Deity, devotee, nam, dham, Srimad Bhagavatam. So, worshipping the deity, uh, Association with devotees, chanting the holy name, living in a holy place and reciting Srimad Bhagavatam. Means reading Srimad Bhagavatam or hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay, so 4.14.1, this chapter is entitled The Story of King Vena. So, who is the father of King Vena? And what did he do? Anga. King Anga. King Anga. And what happened to King Anga? Previously, what was there? He was not getting a son. I mean, he was not having, not having a son, so he performed a sacrifice oh. for Vishnu, and he got Vena, but he was very bad, so he got frustrated, and he went to the forest. Hmm. He went to the forest, and now King Vena. What are some of the characteristics of King Vena we read previously? What would he do as a young boy? He will kill his uh, other friends who he was playing with. And he will also kill animals mercilessly. Yeah, so he was very cruel. And on for no reason something, he will kill, kill people, kill animals like that. So he would go into the forest and kill helpless animals. So... <clears throat> Anga was very frustrated with his son, so he left, left the home. So now we are on 14th chapter of 4th Canto. So we'll read a few verses. Maitre Vacha. This conversation is going between Maitre and? Vidur. Vidur. Maitre Vacha. Brigvadayaste Munayo. Lokanam Shema Darshina. Guptariya Sati Vai Niram Pashyanta Pashusam Yatam. The great sage Maitriya continued, O great hero Vidura, the great sages headed by Brigu were always thinking of the welfare of people in general. When they saw that in the absence of King Anga there was no one to protect the interests of the people, they understood that without a ruler the people uh, would become independent and non-regulated. So, King Anga suddenly left. In the middle of the night, he suddenly left. So the sages were concerned that there would be no law and order if there was no king. So, that's what King, that was what Brigu was thinking and all the sages headed by Brigu. They were thinking of the welfare this is also another characteristic of uh, sadhus. They are thinking of the welfare. I think in Naimisharni also they were performing a thousand year right, sacrifice for the welfare of the people in general. So they are always concerned about welfare of the people. Like Shla Prabhupada. Prabhupada uh, 
sacrifice so much. Why? Because to spread Krishna consciousness. I was reading this past time today morning. Let me share this. Anything for Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada says anything for Krishna consciousness. So let's see. This is own writing here. If you can see my screen, you can download this. Uh, this will probably not. It's not very clear. But this is what Prabhupada wrote in this writing here. Maybe it's here. Last time link. Yeah, this is Prabhupada's handwriting. So he says, sunrise at 6.30, um, sunset at something, moonrise, this, full moon, this. Today, whole day passed at, at some Ananda ashram. In the movie, in the morning, there was Kirtan and it was very much appreciated. Return from Monroe, Monroe yeah, at 6 p.m. Talk with Majid of Tehran, Iran, interested in spiritual rejuvenation and the world. Took lesson for more than one and a half hour. So there was somebody who was, I think this is, I don't know which day is it, but it says 1966 on the diary. According to the According to Mayapur, Parichak today is Adi Divas of Gaur Purnima. Devotees at Vrindavan and Navadip are enjoying the celebration. I am here alone without any devotees, without any devotee companion. But I have come here to serve the Lord and not for personal happiness. I am prepared to live in hell even if I am able to serve the Lord. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted that his uh, message should be propagated all over the world and that is my objective. I don't mind the inconvenience personally felt. So this is from his diary. So, so he was so, uh, I mean, so much austerity to serve his Guru Maharaj. So he says, Okay, this is what, uh, I don't mind the inconvenience, well, it's the same thing. So he says, I'm prepared to live in hell even if I'm able to serve the Lord. So, and I've not come here for personal happiness. So, I do not mind the inconvenience personally felt. Okay, so, of course, he's himself very pure devotee. So. All right. So they are always thinking of the welfare of the people. They want to spread Krishna consciousness for the welfare. Lord Krishna speaks this verse in the Bhagavatam, right? Itavad janma safalyam tehina dehishu pranirathi diyavaja shri ajranam sadam. What is meaning? It is the duty of every person to benefit everybody by their pran life. Artha, wealth, dhiya, intelligence, vacha, with the words. So, well, everybody should work for the welfare of others with their. So, that means to give Krishna. Oh, okay. So, in this verse, the significant verse is Shema Darshinaha, which refers to those who are always looking after the welfare of the people in general. All the great sages headed by Prabhu were always thinking of how to elevate all the people of the universe to the spiritual platform. So the real sadhu, he doesn't want you to become adjusted in this material world. He wants us to become Krishna conscious, to come to the spiritual. It, he wants to elevate our consciousness out of this uh, material consciousness. So that is the sadhu. That is the actual duty of the sadhu. So Prabhupada says he was always thinking of how to elevate people of the universe to the spiritual platform because that will solve all the problems. If you become Krishna conscious, then all problems are solved. So that is why um, they try to elevate the consciousness of the people. 
not simply just how to adjust uh, this material world so that we can become more happy through enjoyment, sense gratification. Of course, Prabhupada was asked what is the goal of life. He said goal of life is to enjoy and that enjoyment means in service to the Lord. Like that. Indeed, they advise the kings of every planet to rule the people with that ultimate goal of life. So he gives the chanting of Hare Krishna so that people can chant Hare Krishna and be happy. They will feel higher taste by chanting Hare Krishna. So they, the Brahmanas would advise the Kshatriyas and they would advise in such a way that the ultimate goal of life of people was achieved, which is uh, to attain, to become Krishna conscious, to attain Krishna play. The great sages used to advise the head of the state or the king and he used to rule the populace in order, accordance with that their instruction. Because with that, everybody will be satisfied and happy. Isn't that what we want? We want to be satisfied and happy. Um, so, with devotional service, Yayatma Suprasiddhati, we say it like that. So, that's the only way, real way to become happy and satisfied. There are other ways to become happy and satisfied materially, but we'll never be, we'll feel satisfied. Materially, no matter how much you try, we'll never feel satisfied. And happiness will come, but with, with, with some misery also. So, it's adulterated happiness. So... After the disappearance of King Anga, there was no one to follow the instructions of the great sages. Consequently, all the citizens became unruly, so much so that they could be compared to animals. So all the antisocial anim- elements had a good time because there was no king. As described in Bhagavad Gita, human society must be divided into four orders according to quality and work. Chatur Varnam Maya Shishtam Purnakarma Vipagasya. In every society, there must be an intelligent class, administrative class productive class and the worker, worker class. In the modern democracy, these scientific divisions are turned topsy-turvy and by what shudras or workers are chosen for administrative posts. Having no knowledge of the ultimate goal of life, such persons whimsically enact laws without knowledge of life's purpose. The result is that no one is happy. So, depending on the quality of the population, they elect a certain leader according to their mentality. And then the leader tries to satisfy the you know, whims and the senses of the people by providing them, you know, different ways to enjoy their senses. Like that. Like now, slaughterhouses are very prominent, right? All over the country, there are so many meat-selling shops. So the leaders are not stopping this because the people want this and the leaders are promoting this. Okay, so the next verse. So Prabhupada said uh, that Previously, the sages would advise the king in such a way that the ultimate goal of life is achieved and they will all be happy and satisfied. So, okay, so the next verse. Um, the great sages then called for queen mother, Sunita. So, she, she was the queen. And with her permission, they installed Vena on the throne of the, as the master of the world. All the ministers, however, disagreed with this. So the sages installed Vena on the throne, but ministers were not in agreement because they knew the character of Vena, how cruel he was. So they were not in agreement, but the sages anyway installed him. It was already known that Vena was very severe and cruel. Therefore, as soon as all the thieves and rogues in the state heard of his ascendance to the royal throne, they became very much afraid of him. So he was a big criminal. So the small criminals were very afraid of the big criminal because he wanted... He would subdue everybody. Indeed, they hid themselves here and there as rats hide themselves from snakes. So, When the government is very weak, rogues and thieves flourish. Similarly, when the government is very strong, all thieves and rogues disappear or hide themselves. Of course, Vena was not very good king, but he was known to be cruel and severe. Thus, the state at least became freed from thieves and rogues. Okay, so he would curb everything. He was himself a big criminal. Like there is gangs, right? The bigger gangs subdues the smaller gangs. When the king ascended to the throne, he became all-powerful with eight kinds of opulences. Consequently, he became too proud. So he got a lot of, you know, 
uh, power and things by virtue of his being the king. And power corrupts, so he became very proud. By virtue of his false prestige, he considered himself to be greater than anyone. Thus he began to insult great personalities. So he thought he knew everything and nobody can tell him anything. He is on the top. So he started insulting. He started insulting the sages. That is like when you start insulting great souls, that's the beginning of the downfall. In this verse, the word Ashtavibhuti bhi, meaning by eight opulences, is very important. The king is supposed to possess eight kinds of opulences. By dint of mystic yoga practices, kings generally acquired these eight opulences. So they were doing yoga practices. That's the, I think the eight siddhis, it seems like. But these kings were called Rajarishis, kings who were also great sages. Swanima, Laghima, Prapti, like that. Those, those siddhis. By practicing mystic yoga, Rajarishi could become smaller than the smallest, greater than the greatest, and could get whatever he desired. A Rajarishi could also create a kingdom and bring everyone under his control and rule everyone. These were some of the opulences of a king. King Veda, however, was not practicing yoga, but he became very proud of his royal position nonetheless. Because he was not very considerate, he began to misuse his power and insult great personalities. So, he, he didn't have any of those siddhis. And he was abusing his power. When he became overly blind due to his opulences, King Veda mounted a chariot and like an uncontrolled elephant, began to travel through the kingdom, causing the sky and earth to tremble wherever he want, went. So, his arrogance was too much and he was like going around and everybody was in fear. All the twice-born brahmanas were forbidden, henceforward to perform any sacrifices. Like when Hiranyakashipu came to power, nobody could do any, any sacrifices for Vishnu. And they were also forbidden to give charity or offer clarified butter. Thus King Vena sounded kettle drums throughout the countryside. In other words, he stopped all kinds of religious rituals. So, what was committed by King Vena many years ago is at present being carried out by atheistic governments all over the world. Because they are stopping the chanting of the holy name, Prabhupada say. Sometimes they are imprisoned, devotees are imprisoned. The world situation is so tense that any moment governments may issue declarations to stop religious rituals. Eventually the world situation will become so degraded that it will be impossible for pious men to live on the planet. So nobody can live. It will become so bad. As we know, Kaliuga is coming. The How it, the situation will be. Therefore, sane people should execute Krishna consciousness very seriously so that they can go back home, back to God without having to further suffer the miserable conditions predominant in this universe. So you don't want to come back at a time when situation is very difficult in Kali Yuga. Prabhupada is saying, you should practice now very seriously and go back home, back to God. So that you don't have to come back in that kind of situation. So, those who are sane. Yesterday we were reading Bhagavad Gita. Right? Prabhupada says, if one has uh, only 50 years of life ahead of him, if one has 50 years of life ahead of him, he should cultivate that short span of life. 50 years, that short time in cultivation of Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada saying 50 years is a very short span. We are thinking 50 years, oh, it's too much. It's long. If you add 50 years to your life, then you will be 80 or 90 or something like that. So you think, yeah, it's a long life. But Prabhupada is saying it's a short span because time passes so fast. So, so we don't, more than half of our life may be already gone. Not for those who are young, but the older people like me. If you double your age, you may not live that long also. So, considering, you know, that the average lifespan. But we don't know. Our own lifespan, we don't know. Average lifespan may be 80, 70, whatever, but we don't know our own lifespan. So, that short time, one should cultivate to become very serious about Krishna consciousness and go back to God it, so that we don't have to come back in the difficult time. 
Therefore, all the great sages assembled together and after observing cruel Vena's atrocities, concluded that a great danger and catastrophe was approaching the people of the world. So they recognized, of course, I don't know how they didn't know before appointing King Vena as the, as the king, but now they thought maybe he will improve or I don't know what it was in their mind. So they gave him a chance, but he, he became like a tyrant. He was misusing his power and causing terror all over the world. Thus out of compassion, they began to talk amongst themselves, for they themselves were the performer of the sacrifices. So this king, they were doing sacrifices and King Vena was stopping the sacrifice. Before King Vena was enthroned, all the great sages were very much anxious to see the welfare of the society. When they saw that King Vena was not most irresponsible, cruel and atrocious, they began to think of the welfare of the people. So they appointed the king so that the citizens should, can be taken care of nicely. But now it backfired. So now again they are concerned about the safety of the people. It should be understood that sages, saintly persons and devotees are not unconcerned with people's welfare. Ordinary karmis are busy acquiring money for sense gratification. And ordinary jnanis are socially aloof when they speculate on liberation. But actual devotees and saintly persons are always anxious to see how the people can be made happy, both materially and spiritually. Therefore, the great sages began to consult one another on how to get out of the dangerous atmosphere created by King Veda. So materially also they want to see that, you know, their basic necessities are met, everybody has food to eat, like that. But automatically, when you become Krishna conscious and perform Sankirtan Yagna, then necessities of life will be supplied. So material opulence is a byproduct of spiritual advancement. Like spiritually, if you are worshipping the Lord, the Lord will supply. Ananya Shintayantumam. So... <clears throat> so there mostly people are wanting to enjoy their own life they are not concerned about others they are just simply interested in acquiring money for their own enjoyment and the jnanis they are just you know speculating trying to find out the truth on their own and um, they go also to some solitary places like Prahlad Maharaj says Prayana Deva Munayo So Mukti Kama Maunam charanti vijane na parartha nishtaha. Neitan vihaya kripanan vimukshaiko. Nanyam pradashya sharanam pramato anupashe. He says, yeah, mostly the munis and they go to solitary places to perform their own bhajan for their own liberation. They are not interested in others. So, but I want to, I am not going to leave behind all this. Uh, misers. Neitan vihaya kripanan vimukshaiko. For, and go for my own liberation. Because I am already like chanting your glories. And I will stay in the city. And I will, where all the people are. And bring them to your lotus feet. Because by without coming to your lotus feet, nobody can be happy. We are all wandering in this cycle of birth and death. And getting so much difficulty. So only through Krishna consciousness, we can stop this. And become happy. Okay, all devotional service only. So he is saying, they, they, Prabhupada is saying, they began to consult what can be done about Vena. When the great sages consulted one another, they saw that the people were in a dangerous position from both directions. So, when a fire blazes on both ends of a log, the ends in the middle are in a very dangerous situation. Similarly, at that time, people in general were in dangerous position due to an irresponsible king on one side and thieves and rogues on the other. So the king himself was a big thief. And if king was not there, then there were other thieves and rogues who would. So they can't do away with the king because if the king is done away with, then the smaller criminals would, you know, have a good time. And if they, if they kept the king, then... There was an issue also. He was also very cruel. So what to do? They were thinking what to do, how to resolve the situation. Hmm. Like sometimes if you do, you are damned. If you don't do, you are damned. So what to do? Either you do, you don't do. 
So, like I was reminded of that picture, right? Of the man hanging in the well, right? Everywhere it's danger. He's hanging from the branch, which is being cut by the black mouse and the white mouse. There is at the bottom of the well, there is snakes. There's a tiger there. The elephant has a, is shaking the tree. So, and he's, he's licking the drops of honey from the beehive. So everywhere there is danger. This way you go, that way you go. Padam, padam, yadvi, padam, na pesham. So. In that picture, I think there is Lord coming, extending his hand. Hmm. So he, that's the route he should take. But he's busy licking the honey from the Sansara Kupe Patito Tegade Mohanda Purna Purne Vishya Bitapte Karavalambam Mamade Vishnu Govinda Dhamo Dharma Dhaviti We are fallen in this well. So extend your hand, O Krishna, one time. Extend your hand and take me out of this well of material existence. So this is the and here, here Krishna is extending his hand to that man who is hanging. The black and white mouse will present. Who? Night and day. Day and night. And, then, and there is this beehive and the honey drops are falling and, he's, and there are snakes. He's hanging right over the well and the elephant is trying to uproot the tree. All of these also represent certain kind of miseries, like day-to-day -day miseries with our family members and office that's represented by the bees. The major disasters are the elephant and the death is a snake. Yes, so yeah. Okay, so the next verse, we'll just read for one more verse. Thinking to save the state from irregularity, the sages began to consider that it was due to political crisis that they made King Vena. They made Vena king, although he was not qualified. They made Vena the king, but he was not qualified. But alas, now the people were being disturbed by the king himself. Under such circumstances, how could the people be happy? So the solution only created a problem. Material solution to material problems creates another material problem. So like that, they appointed King Vena to solve the problem, but that itself became a problem. So, Prahlad Maharaj says, oh, what is that verse? Yes, not that verse. Kutra shisha shuti shukha me gritishne upa kvedam kalevaram. Ashish nato janu yad apati vidvan kamanalam madhulave shamiyandurapai. That's not the verse, but. Yes, mat priya priya viyoga samyoga janu. That says uh, any remedies which are to get out of this miserable life. He says shamanis are more miserable than the miseries themselves. Yeah, like my father was taking some medicine because he had some you know, breath breath problem. But then that medicine is giving headache now. So it's causing some other side effect. So it's like that. <laughs> you take something and then that causes another problem. We try to solve the problem in some way, materially, and then that material solution creates another problem. And then we become busy in solving that problem with another material solution and that creates another problem. So like that, it goes on and on. Yasmat priya priya vya viyoga sayoga janma soka agni nashakala yoni sudahya mana. This word is from Lama says, Yasmat priya priya viyoga sayoga janma soka agni nashakala yoni sudahya mana. Dukha aushadam tadapi dukha matadhyaham Bhuman Brahmami Vadame Tavadasi Yogam. So Dukha Aushadi. Aushadi means the medicine for the Dukha. 
dukkham that creates another dukkha so like that so and the prabhupad gave the example of the what the mm, the cars cars how they create problems uh and i mean with cars we can the transportation problem is solved you know very fast they can take us but because we uh, we are running very fast there is a problem there is a potential of having an accident or mm-hmm. uh, now also with the cars there is pollution problem yeah traffic, traffic problem yeah all these things happen road rage people become crazy so yeah you solve the transportation problem but it created a multitude of other problems like that so we think yeah something i will do i will get this then i will my problem will be solved and then there are five more other problems that come up so does it mean we go to the bullock cart no but we have to see intelligently in our life sometimes we try to solve the problem with material means and that those things call cause more problems so okay so here uh, you have to solve the root cause of all the problems mm, correct that's the intelligent way to deal with it yeah and root cause of all problems is to turn mm. i mean the yeah, we have forgotten krishna as a root cause mm. to turn towards krishna chant hari krishna krishna consciousness krishna bhuli jiva se anadir bahir mukha अतएव माया तारे दिए संसार दुख कृष्णा भूलिया जीव भगवान से बोले पाश्चते माया तारे जापटिए थे सो या व्हेन वी फॉरगेट कृष्णा वी कम टू दिस मटेरियल वर्ल्ड एंड आवर स्ट्रगल बिगिंस ऑल आवर स्ट्रगल बिगिंस व्हेन वी टर्न अवे फ्रॉम कृष्णा देन ऑल द स्ट्रगल विद बर्थ डेथ ओल्ड एज डिजीज एंड ऑल द स्ट्रगल एवरीबॉडी स्ट्रगलिंग इन दिस वर्ल्ड यू नो देयर इज सो हेक्टिक लाइफ सो मच स्ट्रगल राइट बिकॉज़ trying to adjust your situation uh there's no time because we we are thinking that you know all these things are going to make me happy so no time so that's how it is and it will become more hectic because there'll be more unemployment and people will be like stressed out and all these things will happen the time is coming in kali yuga right now only there is people are saying that there is so much job issues and so many people are getting laid off and so okay so thinking to save the state from irregularity the sages began to consider that it was due to a poli- political crisis that they made king vena although he was not qualified but alas now the people are being disturbed by the king himself under such circumstances how the people could be happy how could people be happy in bhagavad gita it is stated that even the renounced order should not give up sacrifice charity and penance yagna dana and tapa or yagna dana tapa karma natyajyam karyam eva tat yagno danam tapas chaiva pavanani manishinam acts of sacrifice charity and penance are not to be given up pavanani pavan means to purify they must be performed in its sacrifice charity and penance purify even the great souls the brahmacharis must perform sacrifices the grihastha must give in charity and those in renounced order of life must practice penance and austerities these are the procedures by which everyone can be elevated to spiritual platform so because the grihastha earn money so they have to support the other ashrams who don't earn money and the brahmacharis should perform sacrifices and those in renounced order of life should do austerities and penances when the sages and saintly persons saw that king vena had stopped all these functions they became concerned about the people's progress saintly people preach god consciousness or krishna consciousness because they are anxious to save the general populace from the dangers of animalistic life so we are on a downward spiral without krishna consciousness will go into a downward spiral because our consciousness will become polluted and then in the material atmosphere and then we'll do sinful activities and then we we'll go down so they say if you're not if you have to swim upstream you have to um, you know put in some extra effort otherwise naturally you'll go downstream 
by the flow of the water. So similarly, our consciousness automatically flows down in this material nature. So only with Krishna consciousness we can resist that flow going. So Krishna consciousness means going upstream. So we have to really do some effort. And that effort is also very pleasing because it is not effort with a lot of struggle and perspiration. No, it's very pleasing. You have to chant Hare Krishna and take Krishna Prasadam, hear about Krishna, all pleasing activities. So there must be a good government to see that citizens are actually executing the religious rituals and thieves and rogues must be curbed. When this is done, the people can advance peacefully in spiritual consciousness and make their lives successful. How many verses we let we start in this chapter? We are ten verses. We are on the tenth verse now. The sages began to think within themselves. Because he was born from the womb of Sunita, King Vena is by nature very mischievous. He has a bad mother. They were thinking like that. Supporting this mischievous king is exactly like maintaining a snake with milk. Now he has become a source of all difficulties. Saintly persons are generally aloof from social activities and the materialistic way of life. King Veda was supported by the saintly persons just to protect the citizens from the hands of rogues and thieves. But after his ascendance to the throne, he became a source of trouble to the sages. The very thing that was supposed to protect became a source of trouble. The king. Saintly people are especially interested in performing sacrifices and austerities for the advancement of spiritual life. But Vena, instead of being obliged because of saint's mercy, turned out to be their enemy because he prohibited them from executing their ordinary duties. So they only appointed him and now he only went. So it's like you bite the hand that feeds you. So a serpent who is maintained with milk and bananas simply stores poison in his teeth and awaits the day to bite his master. So in English we say, don't bite the hand that feeds you. So, Vena became powerful by the mercy of the sages. Like Punar Mushika Bhava, Prabhupada told the story. The rat was being troubled by the cat. So he went to the saintly person and said, what, I, what do you want? I want to become a cat. The cat then was troubled by the dog. So he said, what, what do you want to become? I want to become dog. The dog was troubled by tiger or jackal. Then he said, what do you want to become? I want to become a jackal. The jackal was troubled by the tiger. So he said, what do you want to become? I want to become tiger. Okay. Now I want to eat you. <laughs> I become tiger. Now I want to eat you. So by the blessing of the sage only, the rat became a tiger and the tiger wanted to. So then he said, okay, punar mushika bhava. Punar means again. Punar bhava. Bhava means to become. Punar mushika. Mushik means mouse. Again become mouse. So by Krishna's uh, you know, arrangement, we get some power, we get some opulence. And if we misuse it against Krishna, then Krishna will say, okay, now go down again. Like we say, a human form of life is given, which is like a lot of you know, opulence. But if we misuse it, then again go down. Okay, so that's how. Again, go into the animal species. So we have so many animals like that. So we, we came through that species into human beings. Like we say, if a high court judge is performing the work of a clerk, then why he has to be in a, as a high court judge? He can just be a clerk. Why he has to be uh, in the position of a high court judge? So Krishna has given us this human form of life. Yeah. So we should make use of it. Otherwise we'll go down in the next life. If human life is not meant for self-realization, and it is simply used for eating, mating, sleeping, defending. And of course, if we are pious, we may get another human body. Um, but without Krishna consciousness, we cannot get out of the cycle of birth and death. Sometimes people say, you just do good things and you'll, you'll become like, you can get out of the, uh, you know, you can just, just do good things and that's it. But good... Pious activities is not enough. 
So there is virtue, like he was saying, virtue and devotion. So devotion only can take you out. Okay. Otherwise, you get a good situation in this material world. We appointed this Vena king of the state in order to give protection to the citizens, but now he has become the enemy of the citizens. Despite all these discrepancies, we should at once try to pacify him. By doing so, we may not be touched by the sinful results caused by him. So, one of the way to, you know, subdue an enemy is to pacify the enemy. So, let's see. Like Sam, Dam, Dand and Bhed. That's how you deal with an enemy. The saintly sages elected King Veda to become king, but he proved to be mischievous. But therefore the sages were very much afraid of incurring sinful reaction. Because they did, they appointed King Veda. So they were afraid that if he is doing sinful activities, now I am going to get the result. Because they were responsible for him becoming the king. The law of karma prohibits a person even to associate with a mischievous individual. By electing Vena to the throne, the saintly sages certainly associated with him. Ultimately, the king Vena became so mischievous that the saintly sages actually became afraid of being contaminated by his activities. Therefore, before taking any action, thus before taking any action against him, the sages tried to pacify and correct him so that he might turn from mischief. They tried to convince him, but you know, he is not going to get convinced. So, the saintly sages continued thinking, Of course, we are completely aware of his mischievous nature. Yet, nevertheless, we enthroned you. So, they knew about him. Uh, But still, they appointed him as the king. If we cannot persuade King Vena to accept one of our advice, he will be condemned by the public and will join them. Thus, by our prowess, we shall burn him to ashes. So, they already had a plan. If we don't, if this strategy A doesn't work, then strategy B is there. And that is to burn him to ashes. Saintly persons are not interested in political matters. They are, yet they are always thinking of the welfare of people in general. Consequently, they sometimes have to come down to the political field and take steps to correct the misguided government or royalty. So, they have to come down like Parshuram, no? he had to kill all the Kshatriyas who had become corrupt. Normally they are not interested, but sometimes it is necessary. However, in Kali Yuga, saintly persons are not as powerful as they previously were. They used to be able to burn any sinful man to ashes by virtue of their spiritual prowess. Like who burned that? The sons of King Sagara were burned, right? Kapila Dev. Right? Was it Kapila Dev? He burned. Yeah. Yeah, by just 60,000 sons were burned because they thought he had stolen the horse and something like that. Now saintly persons have no such power due to the influence of the age of Kali. So previously they could curse and all these things. Like Shringi is cursing Parikshit Maharaj, right? He's only a nine-year-old boy or something like that. And he's cursing the emperor of the whole world, King Parikshit. Indeed, the brahmanas do not even have the power to perform sacrifices in which animals are put into a fire to attain a new life. So they cannot even chant mantras properly by which animals are given new life. Under these circumstances, instead of actively taking part in politics, saintly persons should engage in chanting the maha mantra, Hare Krishna. So instead of taking part in politics, like Prabhupada wanted Mahatma Gandhi to understand Bhagavad Gita and propagate Bhagavad Gita. So, by the grace of Lord Chaitanya, by simply chanting this Hare Krishna Mahamantra, the general populace can derive all benefits without political implications. So, so much, so many times Prabhupada is emphasizing, chant Hare Krishna, chant Hare Krishna, all your problems will be solved. Just chant Hare Krishna, take shelter of Hare Krishna Mantra. So, we should take it seriously. This Prabhupada is saying so many times, he has so much faith in the holy name. So all all the difficulties will be solved by taking shelter of Hare Krishna. Of course, that doesn't mean if we have fracture, we don't go to a doctor. But we will not, uh, by chanting Hare Krishna, uh, we will be able to overcome all difficulties. Even we may have to take some material help, like 
to resolve our situation. But if we keep chanting Hare Krishna, because all sins will be destroyed by chanting Hare Krishna. And all the miseries that come in our life is due to our past sins. So if you chant Hare Krishna, then sins are destroyed. Then sometimes people may say, well, how come the pure devotee has to suffer? Yesterday we were discussing. This question was asked that how pure devotee has to suffer because he is chanting Hare Krishna purely and all sins are destroyed by chanting Hare Krishna. So, the answer is that Krishna gives some difficulty because he wants to glorify the devotee. How the devotee is so, so dedicatedly serving him even in the midst of the difficulty. So, that's how we glorify Śrīla Prabhupāda. Right. So, also, he wants to remove the last vestiges of the enjoying spirit. Hmm. So, he may not be completely pure. So, there is some desire for material enjoyment in the heart. So, that also he removes by giving some difficulty. And so, that it comes to completely... Uh, like King Anga became completely frustrated. He just he just left home. This was just, this was just too much. One devotee was saying, you have to pick the battles that you want to fight. <coughs> so sometimes it is not worth fighting. You just, um, yeah, just wash your hands off, like, okay, nothing. I, can, oh, I cannot do anything, I just quit. Because we can't change everything in this world. and So, like that. And sometimes you have to fight. Like, that's what the lecture was about. Like uh, Parikshit Maharaj didn't retaliate with Shringi, just gave up all his kingdom and everything. Mm -hmm. Also, I mean, politics is everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Even in devotee circles. Mm -hmm. So we should not get involved in that. Politics. We should focus on chanting Hare Krishna and going back home, back to God. Right. Good point. Even in any society where there are human beings, there's some politics. So we should worry about our own spiritual advancement and our service, whatever we can do, and uh, that we will be peaceful. After all, nothing, no situation is permanent, and we are here only for a short time. So, that's also how one should see that nothing is, all these things are nothing is, it will all end. And when, when you are on deathbed, when you leave the world, all these things are insignificant. Nothing is significant, all these things. Somebody said to me like that, somebody did like that to me, this, that. Nothing is, now you have to go. So nothing is significant. Mm -hmm. What will be of value at that point is how well I have chanted the holy name. Mm -hmm. How I have remembered Krishna and well, my relationship with Krishna. That's what will matter. So okay. that's what should matter right now also. That's how our consciousness should be. We should be absorbed in chanting Hare Krishna. But of course, if something wrong is being done, then we can try to correct if you're in a position of management because somebody has to manage the society so that people are not affected. Like the sages, you know, when Vena was doing bad activities, then the sages took action. Mm -hmm. they, they could also have like said, no, we do, let's just go to the forest and we'll do our own thing. But sometimes mm -hmm. it is required, right? So correct the situation but after trying and it doesn't correct also then you have to at some point you can say okay or you can wash your hands off right from the very beginning some it depends that's the whole thing right Prabhupada was fighting in Bombay very hard he I mean at any point he could have quit and also when he was in when he went to America there were so many setbacks um, like, you know, somebody ran after him with a knife. I think it was David Allen. Who was saying? David yeah, Chaitanya Charan Prabhu was saying. Ah, correct. Yeah, it's so difficult. But he persisted and he got success. So mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, you have to see how much where you have to draw the line. And, and all this while, there was no personal agenda of his, right? He was all doing it for Krishna, and that's why he was able to tolerate it. He gets the strength. So, they should, we should not have any personal kind of... If somebody insults us, should, we should not feel it personally. Because we are doing it for Krishna, right? So, the motive is, I want to do it for Krishna, for the pleasure of Krishna. 
yeah as you become more advanced then all these things don't affect much but when, when we are not in that then so many things so it's a practice we have to practice and and we should also not insult others just like we don't like to be insulted by others at our stage so we should not insult others and then when you become very advanced then you don't care who says what and what. you just carry on with your krishna consciousness so that is there like uh Prabhupada's god brothers were saying some things about him but he didn't he just went ahead and established his god so yeah so that is there yeah because it will otherwise disturb so much that we will not be able to chant like prabhu was saying goranga darshan prabhu that your relationship with devotees affects your deity worship also so krishna also wants to see right i mean you are worshiping me but how do you behave with my devotees so <laughs> that so many things are there um okay yesterday we heard right amrind prabhu was saying that that like how pratap rudra was serving ramanand rai right so by serving the devotee um he got chaitanya mahaprabhu's mercy that any mahaprabhu didn't want to see him he was pounds and shillings man chaitanya mahaprabhu said no no i don't i am sanyasi i don't have anything to do with him. but then yeah many instances right uh, he he swept one was he swept right and then i think you gave a class mm-hmm. service menial service <coughs> he followed the instructions of sarva bhava bhattacharya mm-hmm. then he recited the gopi geet and then he gave ramanand rai full pension when he said yeah. i want to retire and join Jada, join lord chaitanya mm-hmm. to serve him in jagannath puri he mm-hmm. said yeah he also stopped his servant from offending shrivas thakur right when shrivas thakur slapped uh, was his name he was standing in front of him and obstructing the king's view of the rath yatra Yeah, so that is also there. And his determination, not losing hope. Mm. He was trying his various ways. Mm. Yes. And he said, "I'll die, or I'll become a beggar. I will give up everything if I don't get mercy, Krishna." Yeah, he said. Yeah, if, yeah, if my being a king is preventing me, like here in this article, Prabhupada says, "I will do anything to serve Krishna." whatever he says like that i am alone but without i have come to serve the lord and not for person i am prepared to live in hell even if i am able to serve the lord so anything yeah one person one devotee was saying i can give up anything for krishna and for krishna i can give anything means both you know mm-hmm. those things that are hindering my, my advancement to krishna i will give them up Mm-hmm. and if i have to give in something to get krishna i will give all of that anukuliya sa sankalpa pratikuliya se varjanam yeah that surrender whatever is favorable i will accept whatever is unfavorable i will reject so yeah that kind of like dhruva also had determination very strong determination so whatever it takes whatever it takes to see lord narayan Prabhupada also said like that. If your goal is to go back to God, then why, you know, why do it half-heartedly? Just give it, mm-hmm. give it your best. He said, mm-hmm. "Leave no stone." No stone unturned. No stone unturned. Yeah. Yeah, we cannot be in the middle. Like sense gratification, advancement of spiritual realization, don't go together. We we have a satvika buddhi, one pointed. Yeah, it's like unsteady bhakti before, then 
as we become more and more, if we chant Hare Krishna, we get strength and anarthas go away, then nishtha will come and steady bhakti will come. So before that it's anishtha, unsteady devotional service. So that doesn't mean, yeah, we keep endeavoring, keep endeavoring. And one day we will become very, like the child is walking and falling, walking and falling, walking and falling. So it's unsteady, but he keeps trying, trying, trying. Walk steadily after some time. Okay, so we will stop here. Uh, we read 13 verses. We should read like 15 verses every day. What do you think? Yes. Okay, so we can finish two more verses. The great sages having thus decided approach King Vena. Concealing their real anger, they pacified him with sweet words and then spoke as follows. So they are now trying to pacify him with sweet words. The great sages said, Dear king, we have come to give you good advice. Kindly hear us with great attention. By doing so, your duration of life and your opulent strength and reputation will increase. So they are also like kind of tempting him. That if you hear us, if you follow our advice, good things will happen. Your reputation will increase. According to Vedic civilization, in a monarchy, the king is advised by saintly persons and sages. By taking their advice, he can become the greatest executive power. And everyone in this kingdom will be happy, peaceful and prosperous. So, the sages will give the right advice and the king will follow and then everything will become nice. The great kings were very responsible in taking the instructions given by great saintly personalities. The kings used to accept the instructions given by great sages like Parashar, Vyasa, Dev, Narada, Devala and Asita. In other words, they would first accept the authority of saintly persons and then execute their monarchical, monarchical power. So they were first willing to be guided and then they would execute. Unfortunately, the present age of Kali, the head of government does not follow the instructions given by the saintly persons. Therefore, neither the citizens nor the men of government are very happy. Their duration of life is shortened and almost everyone is wretched and bereft of bodily strength and spiritual power. If citizens want to be happy and prosperous in this democratic age, they should not elect rascals and fools who have no respect for saintly persons. Okay, so they should elect devotees like that. This is what Prabhupada is saying. They should not elect somebody who is not respectful to saintly people. So next verse. Those who live, this is the last verse, those who live according to religious principles and who follow them by words, mind, body and intelligence are elevated to the heavenly kingdom. So, following dharma gives us elevation to heavenly planets, which is devoid of all miseries. It is not true in one sense, devoid of all miseries, because they have anxiety there. But, relatively speaking, being thus rid of material influence, they achieve unlimited happiness in life. Or maybe to spiritual kingdom, it's probably. The saintly sages in Sierra instruct that the king or head of government should set an example by living a religious life. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, religion means worshipping the Supreme Personality of God. One should not simply make a show of religious life, but should perform devotional service perfectly with words, body, mind, body and good intelligence. By doing so, not only when the king or government uh, had rid himself of the contamination of material modes of nature, but the general public will also, and they will at all become gradually elevated to the kingdom of God and go back home, back to God. The instruction given herein serve as a summary of how the head of government should execute his ruling power and thus attain happiness not only in this life, but also in life after death. So, the king will himself go back home, back to Godhead, if they, if they follow the instruction. The citizens will also go. So, that is the real Ram Rajya. Okay, so we are going to stop here at this point in Srimad Bhagavatam. 15 words. Now we will hear anybody like to say anything. Yes, Prabhuji, I can... Uh... Um, I can say something about Mantra 3 from Vishwapanishad, if that is okay with you.
Can you hear me, Prabhuji? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, mantra three from Ishopanishad is uh, Asurya Namate Loka Andhena Tama Savrita Tamste Pretya Bhikachanti Yeke Chatma Hanojana. Translation The killer of the soul, whoever he may be, must enter into the planets known as the worlds of the faithless, full of darkness and ignorance. So, uh, in the purport, Srila Prabhupada explains. Uh, first, he starts by uh, uh, explaining about human life versus animal life. So, human life is uh, different from animal life due to its heavy responsibilities. In animal life, like they are simply engaged in eating, mating, sleeping, defending. And if human being is also doing the same thing, then he is as good as animal. So, the only thing that can distinguish a human form of life is that uh, he has an opportunity to practice dharma, to engage himself in the loving devotional service of the Lord. So if if he is not doing that, uh, so uh, then the person who is doing that, who is conducting that responsibility of engaging oneself in the path of self-realization and uh, um, engaging in the loving devotional service of Lord, then that person is called Sura, godly person. But those who are neglectful of such duties and responsibilities, then they are called Asuras, uh, demons. So throughout this universe, um, these are the only two type of human beings, Asura and Sura. Uh, so in the Rig Veda also it is stated that uh, Suras always aim at the feet of, uh, at the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord Vishnu and they act accordingly and their paths are as illuminated as the path of the sun. So if we are engaged in anything, um, I mean if we do all the work considering uh, to uh, that aims towards the lotus feet of uh, Supreme Lord, then we will not get entangled. Otherwise that same work will cause bondage. It is also described like in uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita uh, verse 3.9 that uh, work done um, as a sacrifice for Lord Vishnu, uh, that uh, work will not cause bondage in this world, but otherwise same work will ca cause bondage in this material world. So, um, like son of Kunti to Arjuna, he was saying that perform your prescribed duty only for his satisfaction and in that way you will also remain free from the bondage. And uh, furthermore, uh, Srila Prabhupada also explains in this purport that uh, the material, this material world is compared to an ocean and the human body is compared to a solid boat. Uh, which is especially designed to cross this material ocean and the Vedic scriptures and the Acharyas are are compared to the export boatman or sailor uh, and the facilities of the human body which are provided are compared to the favorable breeze and uh, which will help the boat to sail smoothly into the desired destination. So um, if all these facilities are provided and if a human being is not engaged in uh, accomplishing the goal of the human form of life, then he is simply considered to be the killer of the soul. And uh, Sri Sopnishad uh, clearly warns that uh, the killer of the soul is destined to enter into the very darkest region of ignorance uh, to suffer perpetually. And um, furthermore, Srila Prabhupada explains that uh, even like the animal class, uh, like swine, dogs, as they also have economic necessity. They also have, uh, which are as important as us. Like they also need water, food, and all things to be, you uh, know, in, in order to survive and sustain themselves. But they are provided all these facilities, like after so much struggle and uh, with under very unpleasant condition. But laws of nature are uh, favorably like uh, you know, showering this all facilities to human form of life bit easily compared to animal life just because so that because human beings have also higher responsibilities to perform compared to animals so uh, uh, with the human form of life uh, when we are bestowed with all these necessities of life then it is our duty in return to engage uh, in the uh, real purpose of the life. So uh, when we are given this human form of life, we should not like work uh, very hard just like ass, dog, swine, 
but rather should engage in the highest perfection of life right in nectar of instruction also verse 2 where it is explaining like six things um, that can hamper our devotional service one of that is over endeavoring for mundane things that are very difficult to obtain so we should avoid that and um, if a man fails to discharge his duties as a human being then he is he will surely transmigrate to the asuria planets demonic planets where his birth is uh, take like where he will take birth into very degraded species of life and he has to work very hard in ignorance and darkness so there is a lot of suffering if one one will not perform his duty being in the human form of life um, and then um, in bhagavad gita also uh, the verse chapter 6 uh, verse number 41 to 43 um, it is already explained that man who enters upon this path of self realization even if they are not able to complete this process entirely in this human form of life but he is guaranteed birth into like a rich aristocratic family or in a very learned brahmanic family so so that because he has put sincere efforts into this life to walk on the path of self realization but due to circumstances since he is not able to complete in the next life lord is so merciful that he will place into such families where he will again have a chance to complete his remaining bhakti so um, he will not have to struggle much since he will be placed in a higher aristocratic family or learned brahmanic family so um, Lord is that merciful. So even if little work done in bhakti does not go in vain. And uh, by simply attempting to realize God, uh, yeah, it's the same thing. Like he will get uh, fam uh, birth in such families. But those who do not even attempt um, and who are to always being covered by the illusion or maya, who are too materialistic, who are too much attached to all the material enjoyments, they will surely enter into the darkest region of the hell and uh, as confirmed that is confirmed in vedic literature also uh, and such materialistic demands sometimes sometimes they also show like they are very religious but their ultimate is aim is to uh, have material prosperity so bhagavad gita uh, chapter 16 verse number 17 to 18 uh, it rebukes uh, such men who make show of the religion just to uh, uh, attain material prosperity. It They are calling them Atma Sambhavita. In that verse, uh, they are mentioned, such people are mentioned as Atma Sambhavita. It means that they are considered great only on the strength of the deception uh, because they are making false show. And um, they are empowered by the words of uh, and they will get support of only ignorant people uh, due to their own due to their material wealth and uh, so simply the conclusion Srila Prabhupada mentioned that as a human beings it is a very great responsibility on us that we are uh, we are not simply engaged in solving the material economic problems but rather uh, utilize that uh, uh, facilities provided by the nature to engage in the higher purpose yeah, Prabhuji Mataji, if you want to add something. Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah, anybody has any comments on what we heard? <coughs> yeah, I like this uh, statement Prabhupada makes. The conclusion is that as human beings, we are not meant simply for solving economic problems on a tottering platform, but for solving all the problems of material life into which we are. Yeah, not simply solving money problem and we are working very hard, but to solve all the problems of life, which is birth, death, old age, disease, like that. Okay. Anything else anybody likes to say? Yeah. Hare Krishna Prabhu. <coughs> Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah, so on that the similar thing, I have something to share. Mm -hmm. It's in Hindi, if it's yes. if it's okay for everybody's yeah, so yeah. like. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so it's kind of a poem. 
it's a conversation of like you know because we know that mind obstruct uh mind is a mind is the main reason to obstruct our sadhana so <coughs> it starts like that man us din ki soch kal jab aayega he mat wale moh sang kya jayega swaso ke aane jaane ka kram jab chhutega jo varsho mein joda wo chhad mein chhutega chhad mein chhutega bol tu kya kar payega man us din ki soch kal jab aayega हुआ सभी के संग तेरे भी होएगा जग ना सकेगा कभी नीत तू ऐसी सोएगा ऐसी सोएगा तुझे संसार जगाएगा मन उस दिन की सोच काल जब आएगा सत्संगति में बैठ कुसंगति से तू हट ले रे कर ले प्रभु का भजन मान सतगुरु की शिक्षा रे जप ले प्रभु का नाम रट ले रे तुरंत भव रोग मिटाएगा मन उस दिन की सोच काल जब आएगा सुख पाता रहा जो सदा जग में उसे आखिर में दुख पाना पड़ा पछताया नहीं जो कभी भी कहीं उसे अंत समय पछताना पड़ा कोई फूल बाग में ना ऐसा खिला खिल करना जिसे मुरझाना पड़ा विधि का यह अटल विधान रहा जिसे आना पड़ा उसे जाना पड़ा मन उस दिन की सोच काल जब आएगा हे मत वाले मूढ़ संग क्या जाएगा सो आई होल्ड दिस एंड दिस इज वेरी नाइस इट्स काइंड ऑफ अ वेकरिंग आई जस्ट क्विकली सेइंग इन इंग्लिश इफ समबडी डोंट अंडरस्टैंड हिंदी सो इट्स लाइक अ कन्वर्सेशन विद द माइंड बिकॉज़ एवरीबॉडी नोस दैट डेथ इज श्योर इज इट विल कम नोबडी कैन स्केप डेथ uh so what and uh, what we can do you know we are always busy in uh collecting making relationships friendship and we are entangled so much but at the end what will go with us nothing um even our body whom i loved so much even japa beads books whatever we have in this world um it's all useless at the time of death and uh, we are i uh, know is in initial uh, ishopanishad also the first mantra is saying that whatever ishavashin idam idam sarvam right uh, it said that we whatever we are using here we get it from the lord lord is a proprietor and we are just using our quota and we leave everything here and we can see that at the time of birth we have nothing and at the time of death even at the birth we have the body i mean we have seen um, someone take birth so at least that soul has body and at the time of death even we leave that body too in this material world and uh, so we have it it and the other stranger is saying that it happens to everybody he says that sure is death is at you know what is a sort like death is as sure right sure as death yeah so um and and so what we can do although nobody wants to die but it happens to everybody so what we but and we know that there is some other world where there is no death no birth is like uh, juhi mata ji is saying that the real problem is to get out of the this cycle of birth and death to go in the eternal because we all are eternal so what we can do to go into the eternal we can do to be in the association of a devotees to be in the association of a pure devotee to hear from them to chant with them and we leave the kusangati like uh, we leave the material association which is the bad association which takes you which which remains you in this material of in the material world but the sat sangati sat means um uh, which is true right um so which may takes you to the eternal world and and we we have to follow the words of our guru and um we do chanting the name of the lord and what will happen then and then lord's name is so transcendental so potent he the lord will protect and uh, you know protect us from this cycle of birth and death and we no never come back in the material world 
and we have seen that many uh, many times uh, we have seen in the material world also and we have complaints uh, sometimes that other people are like so they born like a silver spoon right they never see any kind of uh, misery in their life but it's not true in the true sense because first thing is that in the bhagavad gita himself says that that this is a place of misery so we we think like that the other side of the grass is more greener than our side but it's 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 same it's all over same so and if somebody not even live in this material world with so opulent uh, but if not uh, you know um, if not doing the bhajan if or not chanting the name of the holy name that person is a beggar because at the time of death whatever we possess in the material world it has to leave it right um, one has to leave everything here um, like in mrityu service haras chaham uddhava what were there uddhavas cha bhavishyatam kirti priti shrir vaksha narinam smritir medha dhritikshama if i'm not wrong so he says that right you know at the time of death everything will uh, be here we have to go anyhow so at the time of death it's it's all painful and the other pain is that because if if you're not uh, chanting the holy name what you have you know you have nothing like you know if you are going to the uh, suppose that you are living in you are going some other country then you have to like in america there is a dollar so you cannot say that i i give you in rupee so similarly in the eternal world in vaikuntha you have your eternal credit that is the name the chanting of the holy name and if someone doesn't have that then that person is a real beggar uh, and the, and at the time of death if someone has like this kind of a uh, guilty that i what i have done in my whole life but that time we don't have time to do that so one has to you know, spend their lifetime in chanting the holy name as their as their main business um i just remind that words from bhagavatam that dharma swanus swanusthita pumsa visvakshena kathasuya notapya notapyad uh, notapadyat uh, yadi ratin shram eva hi kevalam if whatever the activities a man perform um you know according to their own position and it's all useless labor if if someone doesn't uh, you know provoke the attraction uh, to the personality of godhead uh, to, for the message of the personality of godhead and of course to the supreme god so so it's like you know, it's the, at the time of the death it's all just a uh, guilt um so it's it's it has to it's like you know and we can see that this nature gives you this message uh, like if if a flower is blooming but that the same flower the next one or two days it it doesn't like you know make any sense it's like uh, colorless or um lifeless so so by this we can understand that we are also in this human body we are also like that in the childhood and young young and adulthood it feels like a flower is blooming but when the old age come and there's many problems comes in the body and of course other problems also and and then we go day by day towards death so you know it's it's it, it is kind of a message that one has to um you know understand that this is all gonna vanish and this is nothing we have to somehow uh, we have to just uh, connect to the lord because that is the only credit we are uh, gaining and that is the only thing will go after that nothing will go uh, whatever we have here we have seen either your relations or your possessions nothing will go you go go with your relation with god your uh, chanting the holy name this is all your eternal credit so instead of uh, collecting the material credit we has to uh, collect our eternal credit thank you prabhu ji
and you can add more. Yeah, thank you for sharing very nice uh, poem. You can maybe, if it is possible, you can paste it here. So it's very nice. Yeah, and what you said was very nice. Also. It inspires, like, you know, think about that time when we have to leave this world, right? Om. What is that line that repeats? Mantu. What is Mantu? Uskal. Man us ting ki soch kal jab aayega. Ye mat wale mood sankhya jaye. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we were discussing yesterday how to chant the holy name. Should chant that this is the time of death. I mean, there would be a time hmm. that would be the end. And and how will we be chanting at that time? Like how Radnath Maharaj was chanting when the the plane was in turbulence, right? Everybody was thinking that's the end. That's how we should chant all the time. That is at my doorstep, Prabhupada says. Nice point. Yeah, urgency. Yeah, urgency. This is my last. Ender Prabhu has a quote, right? That like last sixteen. Then when you come to that last round. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So today is my last day. Then what will I do? <laughs> like that. Today is my last chanting. What will I do? How will I chant? I, I ideally I should not think of anything of this world. Just think of Krishna. Okay. Can I quickly sing a song? Yeah. Put this one in it. So this song, Lokanath uh, Goswami Maharaj sings this song. It's about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Dhule dhule gaura chan Hari guna gai Ashiya vrindavane Nache gaura rai Dhule dhule gaura chan Hari guna gai Vrindavan irtaru lata Preme koi hari katha Nikon jera paakhi guli Hari naam shunai Dhule dhule gaura chan Hari guna gai Gaura bole hari hari Shari bole hari hari Mukhe mukhe shuka shari Hari naam gai Dhule dhule gaura chan Hari guna gai Hari naam e mata hoye Hari naam hashi che diye Mayora mayori preme nachiya khilai Gaura dhule dhule gaura chan Hari guna gai Prane hari dhaya dhyane hari Hari bolo padan bhori Hari naam gai gai Rase gal jai Dhule dhule gaura chan Hari guna gai Aashiya jamuna kule Naache hari hari bole Jamuna utholi eshe charan dhuai Dhule dhule gaura chan Hari guna gai So translation The moon like Lord Gaura Chandra arrives in Vrindavan while dancing, swaying to and fro and swing, singing the glories of Lord Hari. The creepers adorning the trees of Vrindavan are overwhelmed with ecstatic love and they are speaking about the glories of Lord Hari. Flocks of birds who live in the groves are singing the names of Lord Hari. Lord Gora says, Hari Hari. A female parrot responds, Hari Hari. And then all the male and female parrots start singing a loud chorus of the names of Hari. Becoming intoxicated by the holy name, the deer come forward from out of the forest. The peacocks and peahens are dancing and frolicking in ecstatic love. Lord Hari is in his heart. Lord Hari is in his meditation and he always chants the name of Hari with his voice. Gora Chandra is intoxicated by ecstatic mellows and rolls around on the ground while singing and singing Hari Nam. 
Arriving on the bank of the Yamuna river, he dances wildly while chanting Hari Hari. Mother Yamuna becomes so ecstatic that she arises and comes forward to wash Lord Goranga's feet. So this is talking about the pastime of uh, Jharikhand forest where Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is crossing the, the Jharikhand forest and uh, all the trees and creepers and birds and animals as they are hearing the Krishna Nam from his mouth they are also starting to chant Krishna Krishna. Um, they are becoming intoxicated. So that is the effect of hearing the holy name from the mouth of a pure devotee. Anybody who hears also starts chanting. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also, uh, he's, he has come to in Kali Yuga to show how a pure devotee is like, right? So a pure devotee is intoxicated by the holy name. He's mad and uh, he also makes others, you know, intoxicated around him by his association. And he's always thinking of Krishna in his heart in his meditation, always chanting the holy name of Krishna. Um, so, you know, this is the effect of loud chanting. So when we chant loudly Hare Krishna mantra, then anybody who hears that mantra, even if the uh, ant is hearing or birds or uh, trees are hearing, they are getting benefit. So we should chant uh, loudly for the benefit of others. And uh, Prabhupada says that's the greatest charity that we can give to someone is in the holy name. Um, yeah. Any, anything you want to add, Prabhuji? Very nice song. Beautifully samples. Yeah, and Prabhupada says we may not be able to have animals chant, you know, we don't have that potential. Lord had that. But we can make all human beings chant through Sankirtan. We should go out and chant, right, in public. That's yeah, that's how all, I mean, ISKCON started with Prabhupada going out under the tree, starting to chant Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Like when we went with Mahavishnu Maharaj, right? He was making everybody like chant. So he had like a Mahamantra card or something. Correct. So Krishna consciousness is we chant Hare Krishna and we make others chant Hare Krishna. 50% mm. we chant and 50% we make others chant. Also in the Jharikhand forest example, you know, all these um, animals who had enmity, like the tigers and deers, generally tigers are supposed to eat the deers, but they were seen embracing each other and kissing each other. So Prabhupada said that even the en envy in our heart will disappear. You know, there is envy in our heart because we have envy towards Krishna. That's why we came here. Envy towards Krishna is shown as envy towards each other. That will all disappear from our heart and that envy is actually poison. That is poisoning us. So we will become, uh, we'll think of benefit of each other. Like Prahlad Maharaj say, says that verse, right? Uh, what is that? Um, <laughs> Correct. Yeah, so as uh, we spread, uh, Bhagavad, uh, Bhakti Yoga is spread all over the world, all living entities will become calm and will think of each other's welfare. Maybe, yeah, this verse you can recite this one. Swastyastu vishwasya khala prasidatam dhyayantu bhutani shivam mithodhiya manascha bhadram bhajatada dhokshuje avishyatam namutir ape ahituki May there be good fortune throughout the universe and may all envious persons be pacified. May all living entities become calm by practicing bhakti yoga. For by accepting devotional service, they will think of each other's welfare. Therefore, let us all engage in the service of the Supreme Transcendence, Lord Sri Krishna, and always remain absorbed in thought of Him. It's 8.30. <laughs> Stop here. No. Yeah. Thank you everyone for joining today, this morning on the day of Ekadashi. We'll chant more. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.